she was not to blame. She was under pressure by people. She, things have already went sour. You are not supposed to gain her uh, support in that time. And they were pushing her towards divorcing me. And so in her mind, if she got divorced, she'd then get the house, she'd then get the welfare, she'd be taken care of, and she'd so never indeed. have to, because you were a loser. So what was the point in having you? Exactly. So without you, she's made, basically. Exactly. And I mean, I've heard this over and over that the social workers train you, you know, get rid of him, get rid of him, he's not good, he's not good. They do. And then, of course, the risk you... is they can first, take your kids. First, I thought maybe I'm fucked up in some kind of a way, and there was a good reason for them to do it. Because you tend to believe you should trust the government. The government knows best. This is how we're raised. Exactly. You're raised into the system, which your belief should be like, do what the system wants, get what the system's supposed to give you. Nothing prepared me to that. But you got really bad treatment. I mean, I know when I met you a year ago. The, here, that, here, comes the, here comes the things to come. Among the things they told her, it's like, they were like referring to the inner family affairs. Like, like a very good, like, uh, free minded person. When I'm inside my home, I think I'm allowed to work with, to work with boxer shirts, shorts, and uh, sometimes I even baited with my children, which I considered completely normal. Well, in my world, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's like. And one day, I'm summoned to the police because a social worker told her that if I work, walk around the house with pants, then that means that I'm sexually abusing my children, okay? How did that feel to be accused of sexually abusing your own children? Well, told what happens. I go to the police station. They put cuffs on me. They don't tell me what the fuck they're going to do with me. I'm sorry for the words. You can swear all you like. They don't tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to be there like for six fucking hours. I sit with handcuffs on my hands, with thieves, murderers, rapists. Nobody tells me a fucking thing while I'm there. How old are the kids at this point? Uh, the other one was uh, about seven, and the uh, small one was about two years old, two and a half years old. And after six hours, they get me to the investigation room. It's like the classical good cop, bad cop. Okay? Is it true that you've seen your children naked? Fuck, I'm the father, of course, I've seen them naked. Okay? Have you ever touched your children naked? Okay, I baited them from time to time. I changed their diapers. Of course, I've seen them naked. I just didn't got the questions yet. I didn't got the lead where it goes to. You, you didn't have a clue what you were being Exactly, like and then have you taught your uh, children sex, sexual organs? So at that time, my elder daughter had a problem. She used to bat to wet her pants water because her mother trained her that the best for her is to sit over next to the television all day long. And she would sit, it's like, she would sit next to the television and she wouldn't go to the toilets because she didn't want to mess her programs. And she used to wet her pants. And I used to, here comes the smell, I tell ya, did you went to the toilets? I don't need to. So what's that smell? And I used to take it to the shower, wash, wash a tish, like dress her with clean underwear. She's two, no, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. No, at that time she was seven, six, seven. Okay, but even so, it's still no big deal, you know. Right? It's, it's, and then, are you walking around the house naked? I said, sometimes yes, and I your pants on. And, it's like, and you don't know, you don't see the severity in it. So listen, it's all fucking Iran. We're not in fucking Iran, we're not in fucking Saudi Arabia. When we'll be there, you tell me what to do. Send the religion police over and they'll tell me what to do. We don't have a religion police in Israel yet. You, so please. Your second mistake. Alright? And they investigated me for four hours straight. And uh, like the one, the lady which investigated me, she was a female officer, of course. She went out and then the other officer, listen, Maybe you did it, you just don't remember. Come on. He was trying, like, pushing me towards confession. I said, I don't remember such things. 
of my day, what you said. Not even in my subconscious do I find any clue of doing the things you, you, you claim I did. What the fuck do you want? And bear in mind, I know that you're Irish, and Irish people are very, very hot blooded anyway, especially in Northern Ireland. I've, 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 I've got a fucking. Listen, I could have killed the bastard to be sure if he well, only took the cuffs off my hands. Okay. I think he knew that. <laughs> I was cuffed to the table. And I mean, don't forget, because you've been in the IDF, your secret file's going to be fair. You got a big file, yeah? Because the more you do for the IDF, the bigger your file, and then if you argue... Let's see that I, life, until I was about 16, before I came to this country, I was a member in the army. I just can't reveal. Okay? Just let's say that I grew in the bauxite in Derry. In those days, you had to be some kind, you have to be in some kind of organization. Have I done anything violent? Nothing is written. I've did what everybody else did. I never killed anybody, I never shot anybody. Not until I've joined this army. Bye bye. Bye bye, Ginger. So you're entering into a whole new world, and um, you see, I'm hearing a man who's grown up in Northern Ireland, he's fought like a tiger in the IDF, and now you're about to be broken by the domestic system in ways you couldn't even begin to live. I was a man of the system, okay? Yeah. I, I was like, one of those like, always like, looked at Zionism, that's my place. So and as long as I'll be a good, as, 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 as long as I'll be a good citizen, a good soldier, a good Zionist, nothing bad can happen to me. Right wing Zionist. No, I wasn't right wing. Never. Just Zionist. Of, yeah. of, of, you know, your your place is, is where you live. Okay. Yeah. So you were loyal, patriotic, blah blah. Yeah. yeah. And you thought that I wasn't, when you... I wasn't, I wasn't ranked mate winged. I was one of those patriots that think that that's my country. It should be, it should be whatever it should be, but it's my country. So basically when, when uh, you're obviously like anybody thinking when I'm in trouble after what I've done, the country's going to look after me. Exactly. Well, I shouldn't be in trouble because I haven't done anything well, bad to the country. Of course you haven't done anything wrong, but you always think if I need welfare or I need this or I need that, I can go to the authorities. And I thought to myself, a... these are the, the services I'm paying with my yeah. own tax money. Okay, I'm okay. large, but I'm, so how I'm many, supposed to get this kind of help from them. How many false claims did this ex-wife make on you? No, the story goes like this. After I've been there for four hours straight, mm -hmm. suddenly the investigator goes like, like this, back in her chest. Okay, I see that you speak the truth. After she like, like charged me like full on, and like I took like, oh, can I get home now? No. And I said, why is that? Because according to the juvenile laws, you were like, you were like, how should I see it? Accused and molesting under underage children. And even if the uh, investigation finds you, it's on your record. It, first, it on your record. Second, somebody has to co come and sign for you to release you. Somebody has to bail you out. And then I ask him, listen, the guy, which is guy, woman, whatever, which I can bring over the, to bail me, would they became aware to the fact that you accused me of molesting my children sexually? So of course they are. They have to sign for you. So you who the you fuck am I gonna bring over and tell them? Listen, I've just molested. I'm just excuse me, molesting my children. Exactly. Now come and free me out. So what happens next? I wake up. I don't remember. Recall or remember what happened? People told me I like went havoc over there and collapsed. And I wake up. Uh, involves an intensive care unit with a heart attack at the age of 37. You had a heart attack? That night? That night. Then I come home and the wife denies any connection to it. And I think, who the fuck could have told them that I walked around the house in boxer shorts? Who the fuck could have told them all those stories? They can be only, there can be only one source. 
And as I think about what to do, or what can I do? Smack her down, that's not the spirit. All right. Throw her out of the house. What would that do to the children? What can I do? But two days later, and I got the answer for that. For that, which was? Come home and she's gone. Come home and? She's gone. She's gone. With the children. With the kids. And her father, the children's grandfather, calls me. And he says, I still remember the census. I've decided that me and your daughter should be divorced. So that's it. She was always a sucker for her father's word. He never loved me for my ethnicity. And he never loved me for being like non-traditional Jew as he is. Never liked the fact that uh, we didn't have a kosher kitchen at home. Never liked the fact that uh, uh, so the uh, mezuzah was not checked by his own rabbi. So tell me what happened throat. after that then. She's gone with the kids and then, because I know you've had a lot of bad things happen to you, so what bad of things? Of course I lost everything. Yeah. I went to live in a small basement. I had, uh, they had cement bags over there, so I fixed me bed out of cement bags. Just like, you know, put them in a pile so I would have a bed. I had a fire hydrant as a shower. And you may say I was living off the off, off the land. I was going to supermarket, waiting for them like to throw the old goods, taking off the trash pile, things like that. Friends disappeared. Yeah, they do here, don't they? They disappeared. They, they do disappear here. They're not you know, I had friends, when I had the biz, I used to buy everybody drinks because I was like the man with the deep pocket. And I'm not talking about buying you a drink, for like, all my friends, only a few had let me like stay in their place, crash on the sofa as you, you know. Give me a list of it. I know that you have a no exit order. I've got no exit order. I'm not eligible to have a bank account. I'm not eligible to open a business. And the worst of it all, my profession is, a, is a, an 18-wheeler driver. And in this country, when you owe money, they're allowed to take a lot the driver's license away. And that's the funny part. You go to them and say, you took me driver's license away. I've got nothing to eat. I've got no income. I've got fucking nothing to eat off. And I'm married the second time and I've got children which I'm supposed to support. And you know what they tell me? I'll say in Hebrew, You had your children, you have to, to care for them. Okay, who's going to care for my children, for the children that I had now? Oh, well, that second wife should actually come into the picture, but it never does. Okay. So, then, how much money did she want in this a lot from you? Well, I should, I should say she was pretty fair. But in this time, even that amount was impossible for me to pay. What did she want? Sorry? How much did she want? 2,000 shackles, which was nothing at the time, okay? Mm -hmm. But you know, when you look at it, it's, it's only 2,000 shackles, it all depends what you do at the same time. Well, if, if you don't even earn a thousand shackles... Might as well be a million. Hey. So who did the damage, the ex or the system? System. You don't blame her at all? No, I do blame her. I'll blame her for being letting herself be pushed by the system. And when they took my driver's license away, I got like, I was fucking dud, okay? You've got nothing to earn money for, from, sorry. After 33 years, my English had become a wee bit rotten. Uh, you've got nothing but sit at home and just cry. And when you go to her and you tell her, listen, they took my driver's license away. I'm supposed to pay you alimonies. I'm supposed, like... I can't pay you. I can't pay you. And she said... Well, that's my, what my lawyer said that needs to be done. And I went to the lawyer. And I told him, listen. Uh, how will I pay if I don't have any means earning money and he says like 
go to the hotel apart. You know what that is. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Everybody knows. Every divorce, every fucking divorce father knows. Well actually there's nearly four million purses in the Atsal Apollo and it's that means it's not all men. Seventy-eight percent of them. Seventy-eight percent of the divorce fathers do have problems with hotel apart. Absolutely. And I go over there and they told me, okay, you want to drive his license back, no problems, like they. All you have to do is pay us some money and after some times that you that will like follow you and see that you're like behaving, and behaving correctly and nicely and everything is fine and dandy, we'll give you a driver's license back. I said, listen, I cannot give you any fucking money if I don't have a fucking job. Please let me work, I'll pay you the money. Well, no, kind of sir. <laughs> Did you ever go to jail? Uh, I had new opportunities. <laughs> uh, the funny part about me is, you know, many fathers have lost their temper. And uh, you might expect that me as an Irishman would lose my temper, but I'm they a different kind of Irishman. Losing their temper. They've just gone to jail for not paying me as an art. Simple. No. They went to jail for not paying me as an art because they could not explain themselves at court as good as I did. Did you self-represent or were you always represent? Only self-represent. So you never had a lawyer, you always did it yourself? Never had money for it. I wish I could have a lawyer. You know, I had, in two cases I had a lawyer which like, went like, heard my case, I'll go pro bono for you. And that actually saved me. Because in those hard cases, when the court had seen a lawyer standing by my side, things were said differently. There was a major difference. And even without a lawyer, I could only, always, always like, catch this little grip that would hold me above the water. Yeah. So, how long have you been living like this animal for now? And you know what you talk about, Jill? You know, there were times that I've wished they would jail me. And I'll tell you why. It's cheaper, isn't it? You could get some food. You get food, you get medical support, you get a bed, you get a roof over your head. When they take away, when they take away your living, you end up on the street. True. Jail is better than... Can be. I, she can cancel, she can cancel everything. everything. Yeah. She has more power than you, and she has more power than a judge, she has more power than a social worker. So if she's come to her senses, why are you still trapped in this box? Why hasn't she lifted See, everything on you? Because last time we've talked, things were different. When the kid you've seen over there, Atalia, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of my elder. When she went into an intensive care unit about two months ago. Your, do your big daughter? No, the one you've oh, seen over one. here. Yeah. She had some kind of respiratory difficulties and she like went into CPR. And I made a post about it. Like, yes. just please pay for Yay! Me. And she amazingly got pushed by it. And we came and talked and I said, listen, what you're doing right now does not bring us anything towards the children's best. True. And she looked at me and I said, you know what, I've been hunting you for 10 years and nothing good came out of it. So I'm going to stop. Let's say that way, you refuse to comply to my demands because I hunt you. I hunt you because you refuse to com to comply to my demands. So what's going to okay. happen now? So what's going to we're, we're trapped in a circle. You, she can go and lift everything though. She has the power to lift everything. Now, let's say that way. She was honest. Listen, the last years that went, there were complications with the money. And the money is not more it's the children's. Mm -hmm. I said true to the fact. But mind you that these complications had happened because that because of your lawyer that pushed me down to the ground, robbed away my living and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. And in the in the terms of time mm -hmm. along these ten years, each and every time which I worked and everything went fine and dandy, you got your money and you got your child support and everything. Okay? Things only went bad when I was robbed of the possibility so to stand to it. Now to you, it's just, seriously, is why can she not go to the court 
and release you from all So the she did. She did. She released me driver's license. The fact is that after not working for such a long time, I owe more people money and they now hold my driver's license as well. So I'm in the process of like releasing it from their claps. Claps, sorry. Yeah. And all she cares for me is go to work because she knows that when I work, she'll have her money. Things would be more comfortable. No, no like sharp corners that crash at each other is and it, raise sparks. Is there no exit order through the Atzal Pole? Sorry? Did she cancel the Mezzanot debt? She did not cancel the Mezzanot. I owe her a lot of money. She can but, that. but, she said something like that. Listen, I hold this money against you because I need some kind of guarantee if you keep on paying. Okay, that I can reason with. But she said another thing. I oh, know you will never be able to pay me that debt because it mounts up to 200,000 shekels. So if you pay the money for the children until the last day they're liable to, to child support from you, when this thing is over, I'll cancel my claim for 200,000 shekels, which is, I think, the right thing to do. Okay, I wasn't a nice guy all the time, so she still holds a knife against me, true. So but as long as I pay, as long as I'll be honest with her, she'll be honest with me. You know what I think? That is a good thing. And then she goes to her lawyer, which she got from the welfare, by the way. She went to see Omi Shpati, and the welfare gave her a recommendation letter. And you know what the lawyer say? He lies to her, said, you know, if you left those bans off him, you won't be able to renew them for 10 years. And that was a lie. Because she can go to court whenever she wants and renew them with a flash. He was trying to scare her from lifting the ban. No, she went straight to me and said, listen, that's what he says. I said, listen, I don't know. Let me check with a lawyer friend of mine. A day later, and she got a photo, a PDF file of the law book, which says she can renew whatever she wants, she can withdraw whenever she wants. And an opinion from another lawyer that says that lawyer is a liar. Right, I'm gonna stop you for a minute. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna make this video, right, and video is really about torture the torture of the system on you as a man <coughs> you've got a good relationship me, with your ex me me it's not the subject i'll be honest with you it's your the job. main subject right now is the fact that i've remarried mm -hmm. had formed i don't know if i can say a new family yeah. and this family is chasing to the ground because well, your this. child of this marriage is worth nothing to the state. It's it worth nothing. I went to be talking to me. Uh, see, you see this bone striking out? Mm -hmm. When you met me, I was in, a, in cast, remember? Yes, I do remember. I had this hand folded backwards all the way over here. I got forked for 17 months. Um, I'm sitting at home cast, like pins in me hand, whatever and I cannot work, so I'm liable to an invalid's pension, right? Yeah. No, I'm not. It's all repossessed, and I got left with, with nothing. And then my wife goes to Vitsa. This wife? I? She went to Vitsa. Why? Because she wanted to get a daycare for the, for the child, so she can go and work, because remind you, I'm not working at the time. Now, Vitsa claims he ca he made those like day daycare units for working women to lekademit ma to support the women uh, the women class, and she she's trying to get her child into this video in King George's. Okay, I'm already I'm already curling up on this one because she went to Vitsa. She went to Vitsa. I mean, it's a risky. Kido mama deisha. She was she was thinking. As a feminist, and my wife is a true feminist, what? that's Viso, as a true feminist organization, is going to help her get the daycare unit okay. for, for our daughter. 
And then what? And we come over. Oh God! And we. I mean, I'm already scared at the answer here. Unless you're going to give me a good news story and tell me that they had a change of heart and did something good. I'll give you a good. I'll give you a good story. And we go to our visa and we try to get our daughter over there. And we found out everything is fucking corrupt. They let rich children go there and they can pay for like a private institution, but they get into veto. And us, which are supposed to be helped for being like a social case and like caring for the working women and you so on and in. so on, we get fucking thrown out like dogs. And all the supermodel children are. Uh, media people's children they got all in we got very good advertising hello because so you know what i do there's one you know? thing there's one thing i know how to do if you read if you googled about me a wee bit and i go on a hunger strike just opposite the fleets of veto you went on a hunger strike eh? just opposite of veto explaining people that if we're not getting our children into a daycare unit we're on the fucking street right. because my wife needs to work she's the only person in the family which can work at the time if she cannot do that we're fucked wow you're something so you went on hunger strike hey. how long for 10 days 10 days you didn't eat for 10 days well i've had one which was yeah. like against the hotel Paul for 12 days children's game okay so you did a 12 day hunger strike there you did a 10 day you did a 10 day hunger strike outside pizza that's just opposite to this yeah yeah one over and here. You did, what you just sat and slept here and you didn't i, sl you I sat on the street i had like papers which had document which claimed already 2011 that vetoes procedure of accepting children as rotten to the bone now What's the funny stuff is that Vito claimed they're Amuta, okay, a non-profit organization. But not they are sponsored by the government and the whole to have this welfare daycare system. They're also sponsored by half of America, but we know this, don't we? No, no, no. Powerful lobby you know how much country. money Vito get every year for daycare centers? Surprise me. Two billion, not million, yeah, two billion, billion shekels. Two billion shekels. And until, belief, until this year, it was like they were supported by the Ministry of Economy. Mm -hmm. And from this year, they're supposed to, the whole system went to the uh, Office of Welfare. Now it's Heim Katz's place, yeah? Of course, there's money. Uh, we know there's money in it, isn't there? Heim uh, Katz knows that as now, well. Now, the, the irony here, I must just ask you, because they would quite happily take your baby into an institution uh, an emergency centre and get the 17,000 shekel for that, which, which is why they knocked on the door, because you know, they're hunting your baby, Listen to which that. is very cute. Though. And I was sitting on the street, and then... What did they do? So when you start for 10 days, did they finally give you... They got shocked. They didn't understand, so a lady came out. Yeah, you can't be here. This is, apart from everything, don't be here, yeah? This is not the place to so sit. You know, and I just you know, hummed a song. Mm -hmm. You know which song I hummed as she, as she was talking to me? What? If you're blue, you don't know where to go to. Why don't you go where fashion sits on the veterans. Oh my God. <laughs> and she got insulted, so she went in. You insulted a public official, you know how dangerous that is. No, she's not a public official she for could be. sake. She no, could be one. she's from Vito. That's an organization I can... Lucky you. Okay. So, carry on, what happened? And we had Norwich people trying to help. And they sent us to Mahareta Baruch Wong. Which is what? She's the holder of the welfare brochure, brochure in, the in the municipality of Tel Aviv. Okay. She holds the welfare. Right. And she asks, what am I doing there? And I tell her my story. And then she offers us a daycare unit, which is in the Tikva. And very, my wife needs to take three buses each day to put the child in the, in the, in the daycare. So was this Patak Tikva they put you in? No, Patikva. Patikva, it's 30 miles away. 
And did you take the place? No, because I, I went to see what it is. And I found out it's like mainly for foreign workers. Now, everybody that knows me knows that I never had issues with color. I've been to the demonstration for the Israeli Ethiopians. Oh, I know, I was there. I was awesome. wounded over there. I got I was, bottle thrown at me that night. I was sent to the hospital and Khadar Matav refused to tell Jenny it was me because I had a fight with Alain Ahmadim. And so basically Alain they send you like, to immigrant workers. Is this because you're Irish? No, they sent me over there because they wanted to give me a solution. Well, I know they did. And they, they sent me to a, a place that nobody else wants to go to. Of course. And when I told them, listen, my wife needs to first take two buses to get over there, and, secondly, and then another all her bus will go in the bus fare anyway. Exactly. <laughs> secondly, okay, why would you send me to a place you wouldn't send your own children to? So what happened to me? A day passed. The welfare knocked over our door again. Your, ch your children is in risk. Are, are at risk. And what can we help? We need to go into your apartment to check things out. As I heard that, I said, listen, nobody fucking gets into my apartment. So this is the second time they tried to make entry into your property? That's what I was trying to tell you before. They use the welfare as a threat, as a whip. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. The welfare in Israel is not aimed at helping people. No, they're there to take your kids. No, they're there. No, not only to take your kids. They'll do that in every first opportunity unless no, you can stand to, to yourself you like me. They're there to make you behave. They From straighten fear. you like a fucking secret police. Yes, that's true. And as other people in this country think that the welfare is what as us as I used to think. Well, first supposed to help you. Everybody thinks that until they get in it, and exactly. then they learn. But the exactly. problem with this country is that people outside this disaster, who think it's your fault or her fault, or you look bad, or there must no smoke without fire, it won't happen to me. Then and they get into the system and they go, "Oh my God, I'm a normal person. It happened to me." Listen, and censorship is causing a lot. Lucky of for me, lucky for me, I'm a refugee of the school system. Okay. I used to have some kind of position. So what, tell me, did you get And I've got friends stuff? which are social workers. And I go to them and say, let's see, I'm not as sick of playing as a favor to my friend. Yeah, hello. Hi. Hi, Yochanan. I'm inside the park, inside Gamir Park at the cafe. There's only one cafe and there's only one inside Lampe the park. cafe. Okay. Hi. Okay, so... Listen, can I do? Can I stop you at one point and just do one thing with you? And that's to make this video. And okay, carry on let me, telling you. just let because me finish I'm, that one. Okay. I, need, yeah. I, I went to a few friends of one of mine, mm -hmm. which are don't hate me for it. Social workers. Yeah, everyone. There and are I've some good asked ones, you know. as a favor a wee bit of inside information. Mm -hmm. And you know what they come with? What? The names of the of the activists from the Lonik Madim that claimed over that they know there's a child in risk in my house and they send the social workers away. And then they come with my Reta Baruch Ram, which we ask her to solve our problem with veto. And the first thing she does, she sends the social workers at us. And then, later -ish, I started, you know I'm a wee bit of an activist, not much, not in your, not in your canon. I'm not okay? an activist. And I write <laughs> some things about the system. Yeah. As I, as I came to know it. Why well, use things politely? I write Lichora so I won't get myself into a lawsuit. Yeah, and I Supposedly. know that you don't like the language that people use. I know it offends I don't, you. you I, don't it hurts it. me because my, my mother used to cry each and every time somebody was like... So... So compared to a Nazi and she used to tell they don't know what Nazis so, are. So I need to know what happens so I can make this What point. happens is that one day I tagged Tafa Dweek, which is the head of the social workers organization, and I asked the questions very politely. Okay. And I got commented. It was on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I got commented by a few social workers that use actually use toilet language against me. Of course. And I was trying to avoid answering them, just asking and asking. Never mind. Two hours later, 
my post disappears. Mm -hmm. And I get a phone call. You're please go to the police station next year for an investigation. For an investigation, okay. And the police guy looks at me. Hey, I've seen you in the demonstrations. You're a good guy. What are you doing here? No, in this case, well, I can understand obs obstructing the order. I can understand the noise some somebody with the loudspeaker. What are you doing in this case? Facebook post. And I told them, I said, listen, those fuckers, those social workers, the policeman tells me that. What can we do? They're like public officials. And when they complain, we have to investigate. Absolutely. So you'll sit here for 10 minutes, drink coffee with me and go. <laughs> Tell me, did you get the place in Beats or not? You never did. Let me make this video and then we can talk after, but I have to do it while I'm still coming. Do you mind? Because it's been a really long day. Now, this year, which was yeah. the second year, yeah. they called us. Uh, if Shirley Shomotham, can, can we register you for veto? Oh, really? Now, the funny story is, when people heard about this one, there's a private institution, a private daycare place, that mm -hmm. heard about the whole story. Mm -hmm. And he came over and said, you come to my place and your, your daughter would be here for free. You don't oh, need cool. fucking visa. Okay, well, you're amazing for a lot of reasons, right? Um, you'll go the whole nine yards. You, you know, you sat on hunger strike a couple of times. You, you don't need anyone else. Listen, I'm not much of an activist. I'll tell you the honest problem. Hunger strike? I was lying. You know what I was lying? You he know what's a hunger striker for me? There's a guy that leaves a full fridge at home, comes and protests and, and hunger strikes. That's mm -hmm. a hunger strike for me. Mm -hmm. But the honest truth is, you I never really had a full fridge at home. No, well, so I was really like hungry on the street instead Hello, of hungry at home. Some... Jesus. Danny Turan. I you know heard Danny Turan. I know. I knew him very well. I was with him a month before he died. Mm. I was like talking to him a day before he died, and, then and he I died. said, "Danny, bleach to your la 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 la." I don't know. I've got. A, I had a clear voice of something bad is going to happen. Okay. And he died. I know. I and was, he told I, me, I, "Don't I you worry. Everything's good." I call you a The day I landed was the day he committed suicide. I went to his funeral. To me, he was like bullshitted by all those activists in Haifa. And he talks to me and he says, "Like, listen, the only thing that would make the state care about us is if we set ourselves on fire. As if we set ourselves on fire, like this, like uh, uh, there was that uh, Silman. Yeah, there was that guy in Tunisia that did it." Yeah, yeah, that's and true. And he started the revolution. Yeah. And I said, like, Moshe, I'll, tell you, I'll speak in Hebrew because I want to say the exact word. I'm like, Moshe, don't give me bullshit. Uh, I said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I had this bit of bad news. And I talked to a friend. <laughs> that knows him as well. And um, it was a third I know him as a he was my subcontractor when I when I had a company. When I needed like small parcels or small boxes delivered, he had small trucks. I had the heavy equipment delivery trucks which were not it wasn't economical to like like deliver one ton with them. Okay? And I told him, Tishma, Bakur Nishmali Lokul Kachtov. And then he answers, like, Azor, Vela Shema, I mean, Mafpam Lo Simpli. Yeah, don't worry, what do I A week later, I arrived to the demonstration. I reached there about five minutes after he burned himself. And then, like, four days pass, and he dies. And I go to the funeral, and I saw those. All those activists, oh, and I'm not going to Moshe Silman, blah 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 blah. Facebook likes, Facebook likes. And I look into the grave as they lower him down, and I see my fucking self staring at me at the fucking grave. And then I understood that if I want to do fucking nothing, I'll end up the same way. So you gave me gun? I gave me gun, went to the hotel of in Tel Aviv, there was a bench over there, set three signs, hunger strike. Till I get my fucking license back. And you know what? After 12 days, they gave me my license back. You are one tough son of a bitch. And you know what? And you're very soft inside. I, I went to the Ministry of Trans... I went to the uh, 
MOT, took me license, went straight to work. I had the, an agreement which I'll start paying some kind of, of uh, monthly fees for my debts. Three months from the day I'll start working. Started working, started to pay those fees like fucking fuck work. Six months later, a uh, police check pulls me over. They check my license and said, your, your license is not, is not uh, liable. So what's that? No. And I go back to Otsar Afar. You know what I found out? Four days after they had this agreement with me, they cancelled it. They don't even told. They didn't even tell me. And all the money I paid went for fucking nothing. Okay? So you know what I do next? Yael Lapid had this speech at the time about a parasitim shalom simplum. So I go to his house. And you do a hunger strike. Right? And I do a hunger strike over there. And then this I get interviewed. It's so fat for a hunger striker, isn't it? <laughs> hey. And then I go to an interview at the Israeli television. And the interview is a standoff with me and David Madiuni, the head of the Otsala Park. If you ever want, I'll send you the, the video. Love to see it. Alive. I'll tell you something. You are one of those warriors, you know, and um, you've taken two knocks at the door from the social workers. You've still got your baby. She's been in intensive care. She's still here with you. You've got a great wife and a lovely new wife. You know why I married her? Because she's burned by the social services as well. So she was a safe bet, you know. I know that's kind of cynical, but she was as a safe I, bet. As I spoke to her, and then, uh, you know, when you speak, you know, you come to know somebody. Yeah. And then we start talking about social workers. Yeah, no, 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 no. we realize we've been, we've been through the same oven, okay?